All right. Hey, y'all. Hey, it is a mom to pray Monday. It's time to get back in. Yeah, I got my sis with me today. We jumping back in. Y'all, I'm excited about it. this. Is Camelia. I met her and we're in my program. She's a choir. Okay. So I couldn't do this without having a boss mom coming through to bless y'all on this month. All right. So, Camille, welcome, welcome, sis. Tell us about you and your babies. Yes, so I am a mom of um, five. First of all, I'm from Houston, Texas. I live in Houston, from Connecticut, but we live in Houston now. And I'm a mom of five boys. Amen for the mom boys. Mm -hmm. Mom of five boys, ages um, 19, he'll be 20 this year, 17, 15, 14, and then three. You look good, baby. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> So listen, I know that, and I've had the privilege to be able to watch and see a little tiny bit and hear of what Camille does. And you guys know this month, we're actually focusing on um, families or moms that say, you know what? I'm a kingdom mom. I'm a Christian mom, but I also got my baby and my baby has been diagnosed with something or maybe has some special needs. That's the real thing that the church don't want to talk about, right? We yeah. put some stuff away and there are some things you pray away, right? But there are some things you got to work through, right? Yeah. Journey yeah. is joy in the journey. Yeah. So I want to, let's get real about it. Like at the end of the day, there's a space for God to do amazing things and to use every single person just as he made them, right? And I think that a lot of times as a church, we have this box of who can be used. Mm. And so just wanting to just shed that light on everybody, no matter how you look, how you sound, how you created, right? Because the Bible says last time I checked that yeah. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So so are my child, my children that may have a diagnosis or a special need. Absolutely. They are ministers just as much as those who don't. Mm -hmm. Let's let's jump in. Camille, tell me about um tell me about maybe like your journey where you're, you started. Like you're a mom who prays. Mm -hmm. So have a baby. And I know this month that we're recording, right? You've been really giving a highlight on autism. Right. Give me a look. Give me a snippet about like your baby and you and just your journey. Let us know. What's that? Yeah. Oh gosh. So the whole journey, whoo, will have us here for an hour because I, <laughs> I became a mom at um 16 and by um 21 I already have four kids. So that mm -hmm. is a whole story in itself. Um, but but God allowed me to meet an amazing man. Um, and then I got married when I was 29. And so here I'm thinking, okay, finally I can have, do it the right way, right? And, right. and I'm getting married and we're having another boy, which is my husband's first boy. So he was so excited. Um, and in my womb, on our first um, ultrasound, which was around nine weeks, the doctor said that the heartbeat sounded a little funny. Mm -hmm. um, so she was like, don't worry about it it's probably fine. You know, when we went back, she was like, okay, it's fine. But at our first ultrasound, it was not fine. Um, so they told us that he would be born with congenital heart disease and mm -hmm. he would have several heart defects. So mm -hmm. the left side of his heart is really all defected. Um, mm -hmm. So once, when you have um, a heart defect, it, it's not just one because then it starts to, you know, Mm-hmm. Trickle down. So normally it's three or four. Um, so he was born with um, a coarctation in his aortic valve and on day five, he needed heart surgery. Um, wow. And then so by the time he was one and a half years old, he was on his third heart surgery and that one was open heart. So going through that allowed me to uncover a new level of strength because I thought I was strong. I thought I could handle, but that open heart really Maybe. was hard. Oh, and you would think though, that that would be, you know, the most difficult part, but it was him being diagnosed with autism that really knocked the wind out of me because yeah. he bounced right back after surgery, you know, he, he was healed and then he went about his business and then living life. Okay. Yes. <laughs> But then I began to see that he, you know, he wasn't using his spoon. He wasn't hitting these milestones. He wasn't turning around when I called his name. Um, he wasn't, um, he, he would speak, but he wasn't saying, 
mommy, you know, cup or pointing like like right. uh, that of a typical one one year old. Mm -hmm. So we got him um, evaluated, which was hard. But I thought I I believe that the Lord prepared me for that with the heart disease. So mm -hmm. I, I wasn't in denial um, too much. I was ready to, uh, you know, accept what they said. And he was diagnosed with autism. But I, I just, I, I love talking about this in the body of Christ because we are not nice to special needs parents yep. nor children. Families, yep. You know? Because I noticed when he had heart disease, people would say, well, pray this scripture mm -hmm. in my womb. Now I'm an intercessor. Be now, clear. I'm not nobody Be clear. Who? Okay. So I know how to get a prayer through because of my low times. God taught me how to pound on the door of heaven. Yeah. 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 So I I know how to pray. I know how to read a scripture. I've been praying in my womb, and he still needed heart surgery, right? So then, <laughs> but I believe God, and um, God healed him through the doctor. Yeah. And so with autism. I had to come to a place where I'm like, Camille, this is not demonic because I was, I was saying, okay, I'm a fast and pray this thing. We getting this thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They might've said he was autistic, but I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm a rebuke this thing. I'm anointing him. And then I said, Lord, I need you to show me Jesus. whether or not this is really demonic. You know, I need you to show me. And the Lord led me to one scripture. And it was when he cast the spirit out of a man um, and it went into the pig. I had never realized before that he cast out a mute spirit. Mm -hmm. right? So that's the Lord was like, that's what you cast out. Autism is not the demonic thing, yeah. right? But what is holding him? So that's what I started to re rebuke and cast out. And my baby is starting to speak now, right? Can I so, say something about that too? Yeah. Interesting. And it's so... Um, Cause I got so many all them gems you drop and just like boop 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 along your story. Yeah. Something even, and I show I should a little bit for my daughter. Mm -hmm. My kids were um had like a diag um diagnosis for speech, right? Mm -hmm. However, I was like some the second one, like something's up. Like what's I had to ask God, right? And I think we we think we know them because we are their mom, but it's like God, you gotta show me. Tell me, I remember asking God, like, tell me what to do. Right. was highlighted to me as well was like a mute spirit mm. right? we, we we overlook it seems we overlook the small I want to say the small thing overlook the small things trying to get to the big picture but right. you got to get at the root and it's not what people say is demonic it's got right. tell me for my child that you made this mm -hmm. way yeah tell me just like how you made me and I got my funk and I got my stuff mm -hmm. tell me how to be mommy what do what what do I need to do that's right. You know, that was beautiful. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That was, it was good. Yeah. So, so I had to come to a place where now I, I know that this is not a demonic thing. So now I know how to move about as I'm educating people in the church and how, as I hear stories of people who been asked not even to come to church, been asked to sit in their back because their child is, is different. Mm -hmm. um, so I really am taking this on to educate our people in the body of Christ. Some people are told that their their child is like this because of their sins. Um, so it's just a lot of things. Um, and and a, a autism parent already feels horrible enough. Yeah. Right. They don't need to be um, shunned from the one place that the Lord wants them to go to to be refueled and receive strength. You know. Yep. So. Autism is a, a neurological disorder. It is not mental retardation or a mental um, disease. Um, so yeah, just it, it had knocked the wind out of me because I had to allow myself to grieve what I wanted from my last child and my first child with my husband. That, mm. Mm -hmm. I felt God on that. So, Listen, you are brought tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are some things that whether your child has a diagnosis or not, there's some things that I want. Yes. This, and sometimes those things become idols for what God really wants to do through you and your family, you know? 
And so if we, if we don't allow the idol of our image of this is what my family is going to look like now. Mm. It's going to look like if we don't, if we don't allow ourselves to be humble enough yeah. to and to learn to say, God, search me, show me what I need to do. How can I be humble to learn and to grow and to really steward this baby, that, yeah. baby that you've given, you've trusted me with mm -hmm. will create confusion and chaos, right? Yeah. Yeah, because one, we're not walking in purpose, right? So if you weren't willing to say, God, show me what to do, or even open to the revelation from the scripture, right? Or just saying, you know what, this isn't what I thought it's going to look like. It's right. going, it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be amazing, but it's going to be different. Absolutely. Oh God, you know. And, I think, and just even just hearing you, I heard you say so many things, and I wanna, I wanna ask you. I've never talked to be if I can be honest I've never talked to a mom who has a son or a daughter that has autism in the body of Christ I've talked to non-believers but I was told to to believe like right and based on my training and just my experiences like see someone who has autism as somebody who just perceives the world differently right it's how they enter count you know mm -hmm. my stepbrother has autism as well right and so just like how we have different levels of how we take things in, smells, you right. know, like, oh, I can't take that. You know, it's the same thing. It's just how they perceive it and how they conceptualize it may be a little bit different. Yeah. Is that, would you say that's correct or would you kind of give it a different flip? It is correct. It's a sensory disorder. So it's the five senses where we may just see a, a light on a car coming towards us they're blinded by it, right? While we may hear just limited sounds, they can hear the bugs crawling on the ground outside in their inside. You know, while they may touch, um, you may touch something like slime and be okay, they may be, uh, start, they may start to gag just from the touch of it. Mm -hmm. um, so their, their sense, sensory is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. yep. And so that spectrum is so wide um, I think of it like a yardstick and your child can be here where they're more functional or it can be there where they're not um, yeah. too functional. But the face of autism, there's no look. You can't look at a child and say, oh, they don't look autistic because mm -mm. there's no look to it. And um, yeah, it can show up in many different forms in many different ways. So although in my mind, I didn't know anyone with autism before my baby either. And I thought, honestly extreme retardation right I didn't know my mm -hmm. mom has one best friend who has autism and he doesn't talk and although he's 21 he's three years old that's not right that's not for every that's not everyone's case right yeah. some of them are doctors right you see the good doctor on tv that's accurate real cool. mm -hmm. some are investment bankers some are celebrities um Robin Williams was autistic mm -hmm. uh -huh. and so yeah I love that and I love how even um just the fact that, well, see, if y'all don't know me, y'all know I'm really a champion for um, kids walking in their gifts and knowing God for themselves, whether they're three, 13, 23, like, listen, I need you to know God for real. I don't want no fake, fake. Like, you got to know him, like, in real life, right? Mm -hmm. And so just in hearing you, like, just explain even just your journey, right? For baby, like, he came out like a straight warrior for the kingdom, like, off the jump. Mm -hmm. And so what I, what I want people to understand, and even I know that was something that was prophesied for my daughter as well, that she's a warrior for the kingdom. And yeah. it confused me because I was like, God, you told me these prophecies and you told me about these gifts this girl got, but the girl don't talk, Jesus. Yeah. How does this work? I'm not, I don't, I'm, it, mm -mm, I'm not, I'm just, how does this work? I don't, right. you, know, and you right. gotta be honest with God to say, I don't see it. I know what you said. Like you said, I know what you said. I know what you told me. I know my child is a warrior. How do I help them fight and get stuff off of them, but just to be who they are, right? You made my baby, you made my son to be a warrior from day one. Yeah. You gave him strength from day one to see things differently. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe <laughs> this, you know, young people that have autism, even old people that have autism, they have a special spiritual gift that we can't handle. Absolutely. He's so sovereign. And mm -hmm. he does. And it's so we made it so awkward in the I don't know how to approach them. I'm not sure what to say. Mm -hmm. Ask, right? Yeah. Bob, have not because you ask not. Yeah. I'm grateful for the platform, but just in you sharing the fact that 
any child that has been diagnosed, whether it's accurate and sometimes there are also inaccuracies as well, or just struggling, right? Sometimes you, you don't have, you're just struggling sometimes as a young person, especially with the yeah. virus. Yeah. As a counselor, so much mental health going on. Absolutely. Middle schools, right? Our babies are struggling. Mm-hmm. Even put it out there, it's not a diagnosis, but we do the LGBTQI plus mm-hmm. training, right? Mm-hmm. That's in the body of Christ. Right, right. That's, we put in all things taboo. What I'm saying is young people may have a struggle. It may be from a diagnosis. It may be from generational curses. It may be from just how God made them. He made them a certain way that people don't, don't understand yet. Right. Right. And so with that, just honoring, I honor young people who push. Mm-hmm. I honor mothers who push enough to say, I don't get it. I don't got it all. Yeah. You know, I don't. And, and I really have to lean on God to be like, you got to show me the way. Like Jehoshaphat said in the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know the way my eyes are on you. Mm-hmm. Show me, I can't do this thing the way that I'm supposed to, right? So there's an oil on you to do that. There's an oil that God gave you that he didn't give me. Mm-hmm. And even, even having more than one kid, right? I'd be like two Jesus. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, God. I, don't, I can't do another one. I don't know. Right? <laughs> So it's just such an oil. Yeah. Even all the moms that I know that have children, like I'm just amazed. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy. Let's be clear. Really? Absolutely. Oh, no. You know, mm-hmm. it ain't cute. No, it's not, <laughs> not always it's not. cute. That part. No, it's not. At like, all. let's be honest about, you know, and so, yes, we pray. Mm-hmm. And- intercede. And yes, we cover them and we train them, right? According to Proverbs 22. But this right here, this platform is about the nitty gritty. Yes, we're educating. But yes, the crap gets hard. Yes, it does. Motherhood is not always pretty at all. It with your whole Holy Ghost self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, so let me ask, what what has been, because for me, I put myself in timeout. Mm -hmm. Put kids in, I put myself in timeout. Mm -hmm. Listen, something's going on with my, I need, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I just need to get myself. It's not, it's not you. It's me. What they say, it's not you. It's really, it's not you, child. It's me. Like I something is going on. I can feel myself <laughs> being a jerk. I can feel myself like I'm up here and it's not even you. Like, right. It's been one thing that God has helped you with on your journey as a mom of just either a mom of multiples or of your baby brother. Like you're raising up to be like this, boom. Like this is who God made me. And that's great and that's fabulous. What's one strategy? For other moms who are going on a similar journey that's been like this has helped me oh yeah um remembering where I came from and remembering my mother's stance right I was a hot mess right so the show wasn't about my story but listen the fact that I already have four by 21 will tell you how much of a mess I was but my <laughs> mom interceded and she did not give up she straight head on head went went there with the devil and told him you will not steal my child god gave me her and she went to war and so that's what she taught me um so i think that no matter because our children will not be perfect because no one is so no matter where your child may be uh prayer is always the answer knowing that god gave you that child so then you have authority to tell the enemy Mm -hmm. no you will not not with that child so no matter what it looks like in the natural, continuing to have faith that no matter what, um, your child will be found in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Your child will serve the Lord. Uh, their gifts will be used for the kingdom. Um, and so my mom taught me that. And that's something that I keep um, in raising these five boys because, you know, my oldest is 19 now, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that's the age where they're going to start testing and trying things. But I always speak, Lord, don't let them go too far. Yeah. You know, before you reel him back in. Um, yeah. Remembering that authority that as a mother you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. So, yes, listen, y'all. She's been dropping gems upon gems wherever you find yourself. If you are a mom that has a baby, right, or a teen or an adult that has been has a diagnosis or just has some struggles or some difficulties or challenges, right? She gave mm-hmm. an amazing, this is the bottom line, right? This is the Christian thing. Like, this yeah. is. If you don't believe this, right, and if you don't know, it's people don't know their authority. It's the truth, right? And so if you don't understand that when God has given you 
this is what your this is your powerhouse this is your weapon your back yours. right yes. yeah your back wheel to get it going so use that thing i don't care how tired you are you got to take care of yourself mm-hmm. in order to be able to wield the authority because what the enemy will do is use your fatigue and your strength to strap you of what God has given you, which is the authority, right? The connection with God, the very thing that is going to allow you and your family to flourish. So use that, y'all. She used just even considering, I know parents don't do everything right. Listen. Yeah, absolutely. But take what your parents or your models or whoever God has given you in mentorship, take what they've given you right? It's not just because they were just doing it. God was giving you in some aspects, right? The game plan, the blueprint for what you were going to need in this season. So I love that using, don't just, you don't got to invent the wheel. Yeah. What I mean, like use what's been put in front of you. Just like how in the Bible you have Elisha and Elisha, right? Mm. Um, Joshua, Moses, right? You got these people like use what's in front of you. Absolutely. You have to just try to figure it. You don't have to figure it all out. Mm-hmm about is using strategies from other moms using wisdom from other moms using just like the truth like okay i'm not the only one tripping like drunk it's hard sometimes it's okay to admit that right in the body of christ it's mm-hmm. great too and you got to push through yeah so yes camille there was one last thing you wanted to share with my mom as we talk about this month right my child has been diagnosed or has especially what would be one thing that you want to encourage with before we pray out um find community so Facebook is full of groups that are um, for the autism parent, Clubhouse, Instagram. You can't do this alone. So you need people who you can look to and say, okay, well, you know, they got this for their child. They're getting this child services. You can't, this is not a walk that you can walk by yourself and stay closed in. You need someone when those days get heavy to say, you know, it's okay to encourage you on that. And also, there's a plethora of services that I would never know about if it wasn't for another mom telling me mm-hmm. or me seeing another m- child receiving it. So get out there, That's educate good. yourself and find groups to be a part of, support groups. I love that. And before we roll out, before we give our prayers, listen, I don't know if y'all go to the club, but I go to the club. Camille's in the club. Clubhouse, that is, of course, Clubhouse, okay? The Clubhouse oh. app. I'm sorry, Android users. Mm-hmm to you soon give us some info how can they get in contact with you to learn y'all she got this bomb club i've been hearing about it you know tell us about how they get in contact with you to keep following you and learning more about what you're doing how you're making an impact thank you so my name is camille joy on clubhouse and um you can follow me there and be, join the real moms club um so it's a club for every mom all races all every mom because we relate on motherhood you know that's one thing that relates us all and i'm on instagram at moments of joy podcast so i hope to um connect with you there thank you yeah (laughs) so let's do this so camille let's i'll start i'll do a tag team you take us home y'all all right we do all right yeah yes god you are amazing we just thank you for this time God, to just pour into moms, God, we don't take this journey for granted. We thank you that you've given us children, God, and you said that children are like weapons, God, and you said they're like weapons. They're like heaven's secret weapons, and we just thank you, Lord God. They're like quivers in our arrow is what you said, and we thank you, God, that you would continue to sharpen us, God, to learn how to use them, to continue to learn who they are, God. Would you give us humility, God, as we train up our children to see them for who you made them to be, not who we want them to be? To wisdom, God, and how to present you to them, God. Give us wisdom and how to do our days and our times, God. Would you show us, God, the right connections and communities to connect with so that we can grow as women and as your daughters and also as the mothers of your babies? God, we trust you with our young people. We need the blood of Jesus over everything concerning them, God, that their future is secure, that their well-being is full, that their friendships are God-ordained, that every person and thing sent to distract and deter them is bound right now in the name of Jesus away from them. We speak life to them, and we just declare the fullness of God to overtake them in every area of their life, God. We speak your peace to be their portion, God, your joy to be their joy, Lord God. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in their life, God. And we thank you, Lord God, that every mom that has been frustrated, every mom that has been hopeless, God, 
God, that you will pour your spirit out on them, God, that they will be revived and refreshed by your spirit, God. Do a new thing in homes that are frustrated, God. Do a new thing in situations that are frustrated in homes and families, God. And we just thank you, God, that young person that you've given us to steward, that we would do it with joy and gladness as you lead us by Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for a new thing. Hallelujah. I just keep hearing a new thing. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for a new thing. Let us speak differently to our kids. Yes, you see them, Father God. Give us the heart that you have for them, Father God. Give them new ideas and strategies for how to spend even their time, Lord. Just do a new thing. Let marriages line up according to God's plan, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Yeah. God, I thank you, Lord. God, I ask that you would touch the heart of the mother yeah. in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So many things that moms go through, God. Mm -hmm. The journey in motherhood is heavy, oh God. Yeah. Lord, I ask that you would touch the heart, God, of the mom who's trying to put mm -hmm. the, the pennies together, Lord God, mm -hmm. to make a meal, God. The yes. mom that's trying to just find the dollars to put gas in the car, Father. Yes, I pray, Lord, that you would touch the mom whose relationship is falling apart, God. I pray, God, that you would touch the mother who's dealing with health issues in her body oh, or Jesus. in her child's body. God, I pray that you would speak oh, yeah. hope into them, God. We speak hope today, mm. God. There's such value in hope, God. Even when we don't have enough strength, God, to have yes. full faith, God, but hope, Lord Jesus. God, you speak about in your word. Hope yes. is strong enough, oh God. Just oh, yeah. saying, I hope I get through is strong yeah. enough, God, that you find value in hope, God. And we speak Jeremiah 29 in 11. Over your mothers this morning, oh God, Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus, we Hallelujah. pray, God, that you would help them to trust in you and your plan, Father, for we know the plans you have for us, and it yes. is plans to prosper us and bring us a hope in the future, plans yes. not to harm us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we just speak to the enemy right now. Hallelujah. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In you the will name not of take these mothers out. We bind the spirit of suicide and yes. depression. Yes. Yes. Out of the dark place. Yes. We yes. endure for a night, but yes. joy yes. will come in the morning, Father. I speak yes. endurance yes. over the heart of yes. the mother in the name of Jesus. Yes. That they will endure the dark times, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. But I pray this morning that they will be reminded that you are right there with them, Lord. We pray that your angels of comfort, God, will be with them even now god that their hearts will be comforted oh god god but most of all they will remember that through this you have a plan that through this you will get the glory in the name of jesus lord god we thank you today god and we honor you god in jesus name we pray hallelujah amen and amen hallelujah mm, hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. I, mm. Thank you, Lord. God is so good to us. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Because it's such a it's such a motherhood, it's such a thing that's supposed to be put together, right? It's supposed to look so pretty and it's not. We cry some tears and it's okay. Yeah. It doesn't show up perfect. So I just, Lord, touch. You are not alone. You are not alone. And God sees you and he hears your cry. Hallelujah. I thank God. Woo. Mm. You keep wailing. You keep wailing. Keep wailing. Keep wailing. Keep wailing. They call for the wailing women. Oh, wailing. God recognized the women who wailed. God 
told them to call on the wailing women, it is because he recognized them. They were, um, he didn't say call for the pastors, the bishop, the apostle. He said call for the wailing women because he recognized their voice. He knew them. God recognized that they had authority with him because of the wailing. So when people didn't know how to wail for themselves, they called on this group of women who will wail and bring them through. You don't think that God is counting out that wail. He's recognizing you and giving you authority in the kingdom realm. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 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 My God, my God. We go to this every week. Listen, that's what God does. He hears you and he sees you. And that's the kind of God that we serve. And if you're a mom and you haven't been in connection with Jesus Christ, you don't know about this God that we're talking about. You don't know about how do I get to this peace? How do I get to this well in place where somebody knows my cry? Somebody knows me calling out. How do I get there? We just had Easter. We call it resurrection. Mm. That's how we got connected to the one who made heaven and earth, to the one who knows your child more than you ever could, to the one who knows you, your pain points, your peace places, we got to that place and we're getting and it's a journey. It's not a, it's a day by day, minute by minute thing. Yes. We get there because of Jesus. And if you've come out of connection with him, all it takes is so simple. It's so simple. It tells us you just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, right? That God raised Jesus from the dead. And it's that simple. It's not hard. People make it too hard. You start there and you ask God for help. And he'll show you the way every step together. All right. So y'all, this is our moms who pray Monday minute. You know, it's never a minute. <laughs> Sitting in with us. But y'all, that's what we got for y'all this month or this Monday. Have an amazing week. Take what you learned. Be blessed. Thanks so much, Camille. I had a ball. Welcome. I had to go on mute, girl, because I was talk talking in tongues. I was like, oh, I got to cry. I was like, hold up. <laughs> so yes, I have an amazing week. I love you. God bless you. Uh-huh.